Hi, my name is Justin and I am an undergrad student at Florida International University. Uh, today I'm making this video uh, because I'm part of a class called Intro to Digital Forensics Engineering, EEL 4802. It's taught by Dr. Kaleem, one of my favorite teachers at FIU. He's a great guy, great professor, um, taught me a lot. Um, the main reason I took this course this semester was to get more into digital forensics. It's a growing, growing industry right now, and there's a lot to be done. This class was great. It taught me a lot of tools and a lot of hands-on um, about digital forensics. So today, I'm going to give you a brief uh, introduction to the course, and we're going to play with some tools that we used in the course. Um, today, I will only be using the iPhone. Um, that will be what we'll be using for the hands-on uh, presentation. Okay, let's get started. Alright, so let's get started with the presentation. Um, like I said, the course was called Intro to Digital Forensic Engineering. Um, let me first show you the book that we used. There you go. Uh, great book. It, it went into detail, not just about uh, forensics on the computer, but mobile forensics, cyber forensics, networking forensics, how drives are built. Um, the book is called A uh, Guide to Computer Forensics and Investigations. Uh, this is the third edition by Bill Nelson. Um, like I said, it even gives you a little bit of examples, hands-on. This is the PDF version. Um, they do have the hard copy for sale as well. I just prefer to have things uh, on my computer. Right, so let's get back to the presentation. Uh, so what is digital forensics? Uh, the book defines it as anything involving obtaining and analyzing digital information for the use of as evidence in civil, criminal, or administrative cases. So basically, uh, digital forensics is used more in the pursuit of legal activity uh, to find, um, to using cases to prosecute people. Uh, what is digital forensics engineering as a course? So here are some of the things that we learned in the course, uh, some of the reasons why we took the course and what we could do with the course. Uh, basically what I was briefly touching on in the last slide, um, cyber attack uh, prevention, planning, detection. You know, detection is the main, you know, thing. You need to know if someone is, uh, you know, hacking your system. If you need to know if someone's inserted malware or key loggers, you need to know all these things um, to be safe. Uh, we learn response with goals of counteracting cybercrime, uh, cyber terrorism. Uh, we learn different methods that cyber terrorists use, um, and we need to learn how to prevent them. Cyber predators. Now, now this is really big for criminal court. Uh, Dr. Colleen taught us a lot how um, to analyze these disks that these predators are using uh, to make them accountable. And that makes our last point, uh, make people accountable. That's the reason we use digital forensics, to make people accountable for their actions they do on the computers. Most people think what they do on the computers it, or their phones is just that. It's just on the computer and it stays there and it's gone once you hit delete. It's not. <laughs> uh, what I learned from this course that what you do on the computer is going to stay on the computer uh, pretty much no matter what you do. Um, mobile forensics. This is what I want to base the rest of the presentation on is mobile forensics. Um, smartphones are growing exponentially. It seems now that you know everybody has a smartphone because you need internet capabilities. Uh, you need your emails all the time. You need to do uh, transactions. Um, like it's just becoming more and more involved in our life and is this a good thing are they safe um, people are using their banking transactions on here um, they're doing you know a lot of personal things like Facebooking all this kind of stuff on their mobile devices and the truth of the matter is it's not safe uh, there are uh, videos online that show people extracting data wirelessly from other phones there's blue sniffing where people can listen to your conversations. Um, it's not the safest <laughs> thing in the world yet. We're, they're still working on that. And now there's a lot of viruses. Uh, viruses are growing on the mobile 
smartphone uh, platforms. We're seeing a lot of viruses in the Android community, as well as the jailbroken iPhone community. Um, so far, the safest platforms are BlackBerry. Believe it or not, BlackBerry is the safest uh, platform. Uh, second, I would say, would be the iPhone. And then third, Windows. We're still in the early stages of Windows uh, OS on the smartphone, but um, so far it beats Android. Android even comes with, in the App Store, you can download antiviruses uh, to make sure that you are being safe at all times. So now for the remainder of the presentation, I want to show you tools that I use to extract data. Alright, so dealing with mobile forensics, I want to start by showing you the website to Oxygen Forensics. It's www.oxygen-forensics.com. Um, this is the software I want to show you first. It's a great forensic tool. It's used for mobile devices, uh, extracting data, text messages, pictures, contacts, calendar events. I'll show you all that in the, uh, the, in the demo that I'll show you. They have a free version. Let me show you. You just go to Freeware. The only thing is you need a company domain in your email address. So you can't just use Google. Um, they say it takes about five days. I got mine in about, I'd say the next day, next business day. It was actually pretty quick. Um, this website, this company also offers training. And they even offer their own certification. So one more look at the website before we get started with the uh, thing. You can see they do all platforms, Android. You know, all you gotta do is plug it in. Pretty much extracts all the data for you. And there you have it. All right, so let's open Oxygen. That's what it looks like when it starts. It's like Sherlock Holmes uh, <laughs> analyzing some smart devices. All right, so now what you would need to do is plug in your phone. Like I said today, um, I will be using the iPhone. It seems to, uh, to work really well. I've already done it, as you can see. Um, I would try an Android device. Unfortunately, I'm pretty loyal to Apple right now. So let's just plug in the iPhone just directly into the computer. All right. So once you connect your iPhone into your computer, uh, you're gonna want to go over here with Connect New Device. And when you connect your new device, you have a couple of options. You can either do Connect, Auto Detect Connection, or Manually uh, Device Selection. Um, let's just try the Auto Detect to see if it finds it. And here we go, it found it. Uh, it gives you the model name, iPhone 5. It gives you it's like a serial number, I'll keep my finger over this. Software version, and it tells you the bootloader. So let's go to next. All right, so let's create a case. Device owner, we'll put Justin. Mobile number, we'll leave blank. We will call this case 00002. Evidence number, let's just say 0002 as well. Let's put two. Let's put Inspector, we'll say YouTube. Uh, that looks like everything you need. I don't believe this is password protected. Alright, so that looks good. So let's go to next. Okay, so now what do we want to extract? Um, we can do calendars, event logs file structure, forensic information, photos and images, videos, uh, voice recording, documents, messages, and phone book. So why don't we just do it all so you can get a better look at everything that's on here. So it asks you one more time your settings that you set up here. Uh, just go ahead and set extract. So now what it does is it it's executing an iTunes backup. So what it's doing is going the same way when you connect your iPhone to your iTunes account 
it is doing the same backup. So the data that it will be taking will be from a backup done similarly like on iTunes. So basically, speaking of forensics and data protection, whatever you put on iTunes is basically on the cloud, which can be access all your information, just like we're doing right now, as those backups are. Um, this will take a while, so I'm going to let you go now, and I'll come back as soon as this is done. All right, so I just wanted to give you a uh, kind of a view of what you'll be seeing while it extracts. So as you can see, it says uh, data extracted using iTunes backup procedure. So basically, what it does is it it takes a backup of your phone, much like the iTunes, actually exactly the same as iTunes does. So what I'm about to show you is everything that's stored on the iCloud is an image that's taken. So you know, I mean. This has a little bit to do with, uh, you know, trust in Apple. They do see, uh, you know, they do hold all this information somewhere. You know, when you get a new phone, all your information gets transferred to new, and all you have to do is log in with your username and ID. Um, it's cool, I guess you can say. At the same time, you know, it makes me a little worried about the whole, you know, NSA thing. But moving on, it does go through your entire phone, and it breaks it down. Look, look, look here. It says. Uh, it breaks down to different folders. So what it's doing is basically building a file directory. Okay, so it looks like we're almost done here. So uh, let's just wait it out a little bit. All right, so like this tool, you know, it would be used for uh, mainly law enforcement. Maybe a company uh, would use it to, you know, see what their employee was doing with their uh, the company's cell phone. Um, our teacher brought Dr. Kaleem, professor. He brought an interesting case into uh, the classroom to discuss with us. It was that a prison. Uh, confiscated a handful of iPhones and Android devices that inmates were using. Uh, now this is illegal since they are incarcerated. Um, so now the uh, the problem was what were they using these phones for? Was it malicious? Uh, was it for their families? Um, so what we did is he brought the uh, the phones in and um, you know we had to run tools to see what these prisoners were doing with them. And that's basically the job of a. I'm just reading this here. That's the job of the uh, you know the the forensic engineer is to you know find out what these phones were being used for. Yeah. All right. Looks like we have a while left. I didn't know it was going to take this much longer. So I will look. It's going through my apps. I'm living social. <laughs> See, it's gonna give me everything. Now it's reading my phone back, reading my contacts. It's going through everything that's on this phone and just putting it in a way that will be easy for you to see as the analyst. So while it goes through my contacts, <laughs> all 317 of them, uh, I'm gonna put you on hold. And I'll bring you back with a success screen. All right, so. Uh, Looks like we're done here. Um, it says extraction summary success. Uh, so that means you did it. You finished. Um, you can do one of three things now. Uh, you can save to an archive so you can come back to it later. You can open the device and start analyzing, which is what we're going to do in a moment. Or you can export and print. The Explore and Print tool is used a lot, uh, mainly to have a hard copy. 
because uh, once you do extract the phone, anything can happen. The hard drive could fail. Um, there's a number of things that can go wrong. So, uh, I mean, I recommend printing and exporting it, but for this, we will open device. And you hit finish. Alright, so the uh, data has been extracted, and now we can see we've got a new icon next to the iPhone 5. Uh, alias iPhone 5, it tells you the bootloader again, the version software. Um, and here's a little summary of the inspector and the case number that you're using. Let's minimize this here. Um, down here is where you can use your tools. Um, you have a couple sections to choose from device information, uh, file browser, organization, which gives you the calendar and the notes, phone book, uh, messages, event log. So, all these things we're going to do. If you see a little unregistered next to it, it's because we're using the free version. And we can also see what applications are on the phone if we had the, uh, the full paid version. So let's start by you know doing our analysis on, let's go with event log. So you double click on event log. You can see the calls that were placed in, out. Uh, let's just say we wanted to see answered. It gives you answered calls, calls that came in, it gives you the uh, country code so you know call duration, how long they were on the phone and if they were voice it gives you times, numbers, you can see missed calls here even dialed calls, dialed calls, you can see duration, same thing you can even print these out as a summary and since we are using the iPhone 5 it does give you the FaceTime option which shows you what users you FaceTimed with. Okay, so let's go back. Um, let's look at the calendar. As you can see, it gives you all the calendar events that were done. Um, as you can see here, the Barcelona games, I had a test in logics. Um, so this is very helpful for an analysis uh, point of view. Maybe they put some things in there that will help you with the case. Notes. I make little notes at school uh, for my building, the elevator code to get to my floor, a uh, little workout routine there. Um, you know, you can see a lot of information in the notes because that's a great place to look first for evidence. Uh, a lot of people do use that for uh, hiding. Um, let's go to messages. Let's see what's here in messages now. All right, so we're in messages, and you can see types. You can organize types: iMessage, MMS, or SMS, which is Simple Messaging Services. It gives you the contact name. Um, it gives you the actual message, the time it was done. If there was an attachment to it, you can see pictures. Um, let's see how far these go back. See, on this particular device, it looks like I have messages all the way back from 626. So maybe it's something I just haven't deleted or um, something else. And here again, you can print out the conversations. You can, uh, let's see, you can just do, let's do this one here. And you can see, show message. Comes up, I just asked the question, what? Um, you can see that, you can save it. I'll put this all together in a document. Look at phone book now. This is also a great way uh, to see who people were contacting with. You can go through an entire phone book here, email addresses, phone numbers, and all of the person. Again, all printable. You can show contact card, which even gives the face pictures if they are available. Um, let's go through the file browser. Let's see what's over here now. So it reads it as a C drive. Um, you can go through the person's photos, photo data, all the photos that are on the phone are in here. You can go through Safari records. So basically what this does is it, it, it tears down the phone backup that you took and puts it into a kind of C categorized file directory, what the sections of it does. You go to images, it finds your images, audio, your audio, videos, you know, documents if there's anything saved. Um, 
other files, you know, key list. This gives you well, actually a lot of information here uh, about applications. Most of this stuff is going to be encrypted. Uh, cache. Uh, there's a lot of information on here I didn't know it was on here. Uh, you can tell a lot of Apple services are on here. You can also view these geo files and thumbnails if it's been enabled. Alright. So that's what I have for this Oxygen Forensics. Alright, so for the next tool, I, I want to show you. Uh, a Linux operating system called Santoku Linux. Um, this is a whole Linux operating system just dedicated to mobile forensics, mobile malware, and mobile security. Um, Sandoku uh, is a Japanese word that means three virtues, hence the three different uses of this uh, of this OS. Uh, since it is a Linux operating system, it is free. Let me just show you the website, santuko-linux.com, and it even has how-tos, free downloads. I have it set up today in a virtual machine using VMware Player. Um, as you can see, it's fully functional, and I don't have to partition my hard drive to do it. Um, so let me just show you a few of the things that are on here that you can possibly do. Um, we have a sort of accessories like any other Linux operating system uh, it has the basics um, this one is based off Ubuntu so it has a lot of the same features you would see in Ubuntu you have calculator image viewer for internet you have Chrome uh, this is even offers programming now let's get into Sanduku why this is different than Ubuntu mainly right here you have development tools you have Android SDK Manager, um, which is used for, you know, you can use malware, uh, reverse engineering with this. You can even, you know, you make apps. Uh, what the SDK is, is the whole Android operating system. So once you have it, you can edit it. You can compare to uh, ones you find off phones that you are extracting data from. Uh, you have a Google Play API in here. Um, now the device forensics part. This is where I, you know this comes into play. Um, this one here, AF Logical OSE, is great for Android phones and dissecting the, you know, their operating system and their file system. Um, a lot of Android phones have brute, I mean, have a key code to get in. This app right here, brute force encryption, helps you take the 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 pattern or the numbers it helps you crack it. Um, to do this, you just needed a phone to test it with, which we do not have Android. Um, let's look what else we have. We also have here's the iPhone part right here. Um, iPhone backup analyzer, much like the same tool we used. I like this one a little better. Um, when I tested it, I've actually gotten. Uh, deleted images which was really cool um, to see that it, I can actually extract it. But to do this you de need to do have a, uh, a backup going. Fortunately right now my phone is not being able to transmit into the virtual machine so I won't be able to show you that right now. Uh, pen testing. This is pretty cool that they have this on here. Um, I took mobile, I took, I mean, ethical hacking, and a lot of these tools you see in ethical hacking, uh, Zen Mapping, EthCap, uh, you know, Burp Suite, all these things you see in there. Here's some reverse engineering tools. These are mainly used for malware re reverse engineering. Um, you see APK tool, that's a good one to use, or anti LVL, which just stands for level. Um, let's see what else. And for wireless. Analyzers, Wireshark, you know, what's better than Wireshark, and a sniff, uh, DNS Chef, you have it all on here. Um, this is a great forensics tool to use. I uh, just wanted to just basically just give you a general view of it so you can see what it is and know what it is. And um, with that, I'm going to conclude the presentation. You know, I did show you uh, what intro to forensics is.
Um, I gave you a brief uh, introduction to mobile forensics. Huge thing right now. It's you know what I want to end up doing after I graduate from FIU. Um, I took you into analyzing the iPhone using the Oxygen Suite. Um, showed you, you meant some of my personal information on there, um, and then I moved you and showed you the bigger picture, which is uh, Sandoku. Um, great tool to use. It's free to download. And many tutorials how to use it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and take mobile, uh, take a forensics free course.